that about, and that is about the balance whole concept. <clears throat> and the topic of today's uh, uh, presentation will be about this uh, concept, and I will tell you more about the development history, proof of the concept, also benefits, and, and a little into the science, which, will, which we will hear more on in later presentations. So, so we we'll start with the, with the development history. And the original balance oil concept was uh, ready by in, in 2010, ready for the marketing. It was developed by a Norwegian company, Bioactive Foods, in which I just happened to be the CEO. And it consists of three parts. It consists of a, a blood sampling device called the Sincino Balance Test to detect. It is a, a laboratory analysis with a report providing dietary advice and it is a dietary support supplement. <clears throat> and uh, as you can see from the, from the dates below or the uh, years below, the, the elements, uh, these uh, this, uh, three elements was not developed uh, simultaneously or, or in the right order. So we we'll have to start to, to see the look at the history. We'll have to start with the balance oil and see why that was developed. Uh, the balance oil is, uh, is a blend of fish oil, refined fish oil, and cold-pressed pickerel olive oil. It is, uh, it is actually uh, uh, developed. The aim when we developed this, uh, this product was to get as close as we can to the, to the fish oil as it is within the fish and not as, as, you, and not as, as it is uh, normally today to have a very refined uh, uh, and purified fish oil. And the reason for that is uh, two, two, uh, two reasons. Uh, today, there is, a, is a environmental com uh, contaminants uh, is a problem in, in, in the fatty fish. And by uh, European regulation, legislation, you have to refine any fish oil extracted from, from extracted or, or produced from fish before it can be used for human consumption. And when you refine or purify a fish oil, you, it will be almost free from odor and taste if you do it correctly, and it will contain about 30% omega-3. But this fish oil, the refined fish oil is also free from other bioact uh, bioactive components such as uh, the fatty acids, uh, fatty soluble vitamins, antioxidants and anti-inflammatory components, especially fluorotannins that are lost during refining. The fluorotannins normally follow the omega trees all the way from the plankton to the fish, to the whales, to humans, so it's, it's important components. <clears throat> and normally today to stabilize the refined fish oil or purified fish oil, we add vitamins and antioxidants like the mixed tocopherols back to the to refine oils, while the important fluorotannins, they are not, not possible to put back due to low availability, but also to its uh, terrible taste. The story uh, about uh, refining of fish oil as a problem has already been, been told, but uh, so we had to, and, and most of the components uh, or some of the components which are lost during fish oil refining can be put back to the to the fish oil, <clears throat> but the important fluorotannins that are, are stabilizing the fish oils, they are not able to be put back due to availability and taste. So we have to look for other options. And one of the other options which is out there is, is uh, when you produce uh, uh, extra virgin olive oil, it's, it is produced by cold pressing of the olive. And so you don't have to refine uh, olive oil when, or, or uh, 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 after it is pressed. And it do, the extra virgin olive oil, they contain about 75% of oleic acid, but it also contains uh, high levels of polyphenols as well as other bioactive components. So what we lose when we refine fish oil, you, 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 you contain, we, you, you will have, you will, it will be uh, in, the, in the olive oil uh, when that is produced. And the, the good thing is that the polyphenols from olive have many of the same properties as the fluorotannins from fish and may substitute the fluorotannins when blending refined fish oil and cold pressed olive oil. And that is the simple reason why we use a, a blend of refined fish oil and cold pressed 
because olive oil to produce the olive balance oil in the beginning. So balance oil is, is in principle a, a more or less a, a crude, more a crude fish oil, more like a fatty fish than refined omega trees. The original balance test, that, was, uh, that is the test that was from, from the uh, 2008 about, and it is a, a dry blood spot uh, test in which you make a, a, pick, a prick in the finger with a needle and you take out some blood droplets which is dropping down onto a, a filter paper. <clears throat> and uh, on this filter paper, when, when the drop comes into the filter paper, it of course contains all the components of blood and also the reactions going on in, in blood will be active. But uh, when it is in the filter paper, it will dry up uh, rather quickly. And when it dries, two things happen. The reactions uh, or anything going on more or less stops up. And also all biohazards is, is, is uh, very much reduced. So, so it, it will be legal to send a filter paper with, with uh, with a, uh, a dry, dry blood spot uh, by regular mail to a, a laboratory. And uh, the laboratory that uh, we use uh, is uh, the VITAS laboratories at the uh, Oslo Science Park. And uh, they extract the fatty acids from, from, uh, from this uh, uh, blood uh, drop and make, a rep uh, make an analysis of the amount of the different fatty acids. So originally, this, this method was, uh, was published by Galli, Professor Galli et al. at the University of Milan. However, where it was presented to, to Bioactive Foods by the professor Bruno Berra and Angela Rizzo, also at the same University of Milan, who were using this technique for scientific purposes in early 2008. Okay, we can move on. So all together today, we have, uh, or VITAS have analyzed about 600,000 balance tests. And as we move on, we will look into uh, some of the results coming from these tests. But first of all, we have to select the fatty acids to be messaged by, by VITAS. And those fatty acids comes from, from uh, the metabolism or dietary fatty acids. And first of all, if you can click, uh, First of all, we are measuring two uh, saturated fatty acids, is the palmitic acid and the stearic acid, which constitute about the 37 to 41% of the fatty acids in blood, depending on the diet. The second group is, uh, if you can click, is, is the oleic acid, the monounsaturated omega-9 fatty acid oleic, which is uh, somewhere between uh, 22 and 26% in blood, also depending on diet. The third group is the omega-6 uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids. The four more, more, most important ones are measured and they, they will be around 30% in, in the blood, independent of diet, more or less independent of diet. And the last group is the omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids. We will measure the important ones, alpha linoleic acid, EPA, DPA, and DHA. And they will be somewhere between 3 to 10% in, in blood normally, uh, and, uh, and uh, also very much depending on, on the diet. Altogether, this, uh, this uh, if you can click, it will be about 98 to 99% uh, of the fatty acids in blood are, are measured. And if you look into the effect of these uh, fatty acids, they will affect the uh, biological processes such as inflammation, immunity, circulate, circulating lipids like the uh, LDL cholesterol and so on, cardiovascular diseases, neuronal and visceral development, depression and aggression, and cognitive maintenance. So those fatty acids are really involved in many important biological processes. Okay, let's move on. Then in 2008, the, the, we also looked at uh, how can we calculate some health indicators from, from these uh, dietary fatty acids in the blood that is measured. And the, the two original health indicators was, uh, the, um, the first of all, was the omega-3 indicator, which were published in 2004 by Professor William Harris at the University of South Dakota. 
he int introduced this omega-3 index as an independent risk indicator for cardiovascular diseases. And he suggested that uh, we should have more than 8% of EPA and DHA in a red blood cell. That should be a target to, to reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease. Uh, in, in 2008, when we visited the University of Milan, we also were introduced to the omega-6-3 balance indicator, the ratio between arachidonic acid and EPA by Professor Bruno Baran and Schlorissio. And they suggested that the, the target value for this indicator should be less than three to one, uh, not more than three times arachidonic acid compared to uh, EPA to, to uh, balance the infl infl to be a balancing in inflammation indicator. So uh, if we move on, then having the tools of, of, the, of the dry blood spot, it is uh, a si simple, more simple to, to control the bioavailability of the omega trees in, in, in the in the that we eat from the daily diet, including any balanced oil. Because when we eat our daily diet, the, the food goes down to the stomach where the fat starts to uh, hydrolyze and it continues into the small intestine where it's mixed with bile acids. And then it's transported to the liver where, where new uh, triglycerides are built and then put into small uh, cholesterol uh, uh, particles uh, like, the, like the LDL cholesterol, which will transport, uh, transport uh, the fat uh, uh, in the blood. Uh, at that point, we, call the, we can measure the bioavailability and we call this value in the whole blood, we call this value the omega-3 level when it re related to omega-3. And, uh, and it is very simple to, this is the most simple way of, of measuring bioavailability, how much is in the blood compared to what you are eating. And then, but as we move on, the, uh, the uh, um, uh, fat in the blood is of course imported into fat into cells in the body, but it's mainly used for energy production or for building the cell membranes. That is the biggest story. And cell membranes is more, more or less a, a, a storage of, of the omega-3 uh, or, or storage of fatty acids in, in the cells. And here we can say, it, call it the bioavailability two, because if this was a red blood cell, we would say we call the, the level of EPA and DHA in this cell for omega-3 index, uh, which, is, uh, which was uh, calculated by uh, or, or in a, uh, suggested by Professor Harris. But uh, it is an easy relationship between omega-3 level and omega-3 index. If we can uh, go on. It is a mathematical relation, so you can easily calculate the omega-3 index from the omega-3 level. And the, and the interesting part is that omega-3 index is always a little higher than omega-3 level. So if you reach a target level of omega-3, you will always reach a, a target level of, of omega-3 index. So, and so that is, is, makes it more easy to just uh, measure, the blood, measure the whole blood compared to separating out the blood, red blood cells to do the measurement. But of course, uh, there is uh, one, one issue more in, uh, if you can click on the, it can move on. It is of course that if you're eating too much fat, you will uh, the fat cell. You will also fill the fat cells. Uh, so so we have to be in a controlled way with it. But this is the main route for for some of the fats in 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 your diet. Okay. Then the next step is of course to uh, to uh, to find out how much. Uh, balanced oil uh, do we need to consume daily to be able to reach the uh, target values of the health indicators. And it just uh, happens after, it just happened to be a, an, on average about 0.2 milliliter per kilo body weight measured by, by the DBS the thing. And, and I'll give you one example, if you can press the key. Uh, and that is uh, 0.2 milliliter per kilo body weight. If you are 100 kilo, you will need 20 milliliters a day. And that will give you about three gram of EPA and DHA. And the intake of three gram uh, 
well, you will you will be able to reach at intake of three gram when you're 100 kilo. You will be able to reach about eight percent of the omega three level in 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 the blood. So that is reaching the reaching the the target level. Of course, if you are only a 50 kilo, you will only need 10 milliliters or with one and a half gram of omega three. Or if you are 65, you will only need 13 milliliters with two gram of omega-3 to, to reach the same 8% or the target in, in the blood. So, and, and then before we can sort of start marking this on, on a bigger scale, we needed to look into the food safety of balanced oil. Is it, is it safe to eat this much of omega-3? And according to the European Food Safety Authority, Intake up to five gram omega-3 uh, daily does not provoke any negative effects in healthy children and adults, assuming, and this is important, assuming oxidative stability in the body. And they also say at the European Food Safety Authority that intake up to five gram omega-3 daily does not increase the risk of bleeding, even for individuals taking blood thinning medication. So, and five gram omega-3, that is the same as you will have in 33 milliliter balanced oil, uh, a daily dose required for a person which is 167 kilos. So, so most people will be far from this, uh, this uh, level in, 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 their, in their daily diet. So it's about, uh, this uh, one assumption here is important. It is about oxidative stability in the body. So we need to have enough of, of, of uh, uh, stabilizing components in the oil to, to, to make uh, this uh, oxidative stability. And we have two components in the, in the balanced oil, and one is the polyphenols from olives. And according to uh, European Food Safety Authority, if you have a five milligram a day, it will contribute to protection of blood lipids against oxidative stress which will provide uh, oxidative stability in the body. There is also some vitamin E, vitamin e in the balanced oil, which also will contribute to the protection of cell constituents from oxidative damage. And also will, will provide uh, some oxidative stability in the body. And the question is, if, if how much, uh, the question is of course to find the right balance between the refined fish oil and the extra virgin olive oil so we can provide this uh, oxidative, oxidative stability. And uh, if you can have the next slide. This is, uh, this is uh, proof of concept for this was made in an EU project uh, called Enrich Mar in 2014, where we had uh, people 40 to 50 in each group uh, that for 10 weeks were taking balanced oil and rich yogurt or placebo. So they didn't know what they were eating. The placebo was uh, refined olive oil at that time. Uh, uh, what we find out that uh, we were me measuring a malon dial here in, 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 in blood. And what the, the results show, as uh, if you can push a key, was that uh, there was no changes in, in malondialdehyde while, while you were eating placebo or, or balanced oil. It was uh, stable, so that is kind of proof of concept that we, we, the mix that we are making through balanced oil provide oxidative stability in, in the body. Okay. So in 2014, Sincino uh, acquired Bioactive Foods. But although we had a distribution agreement uh, between Bioactive Foods and Sincino going on already since uh, uh, 2012. So, so uh, next year, it will be 10 years since this distribution agreement was, was made. Okay. And uh, then we can jump ahead a little up to today, to 2021, when we started to look at, at the balance test and, the, and uh, some of the things I will talk about now, we'll, we'll deal with about 579,515 balance tests. And the first thing, of course, is to, to question, what are the relationship between the original health indicators, the one from Harris regarding omega-3 index or omega-3 balance, if you like, or the, balance, uh, the, or the inflammatory balance indicator from uh, uh, Bruno Bader and Ashley Risso in 2008? And, and uh, 
the, the, the striking here, every point on this curve is about the, is the average of 15,000 balance tests. So you get a smooth curve, but it is uh, many, many, many results behind every point. And if you click a new, new, new click once more time, uh, the first of all, we will see that uh, if you are below three to one or three, as it says on the column, in, in, in the balance indicator, you will always be, be above 8% in the omega-3 uh, level indicator. So these two indicators that we started out with uh, is ac actually turning out to be identical. They provide the same answer. So balanced inflammation and the cardiovascular uh, uh, risk reduction indicator originally turn out to be identical. When we when we do uh, when we for people that take the balance test, we always ask if they are using balanced oil, uh, or if they have been using other omega three, or if they are, are non omega three users. And you see that uh, the average of the three hundred thousand non omega three users is about seventeen to one, seven yeah seventeen to one, and about three and a half uh, uh, percent of omega three in the blood. Uh, for those who use, state that they use other omega-3, we have about 70,000. They, they have an average of 10 to 1 in the uh, arachidonic acid versus EPA, and they have about 4.5% uh, omega-3 on average in their body. And the, the group of people that state that they are using balanced oil, about 125,000 here, they have an average uh, 5 to 1 on the, on the balance uh, scale and around 6% of omega-3 in the blood. And if we look at the curve, the balanced oil users, they fully dominate the points uh, to the higher omega-3 values to the right uh, of, uh, of the middle, while they do not, those who do not use omega-3, they dominate the area of, of uh, uh, with the low omega-3 values. And we will look into what are the difference between those two groups. So we'll see, we take about uh, 120,000 of the people with the low omega-3 values in the blood and about 100,000 people with, which is above 6% uh, omega-3 fatty acids uh, in the blood. And the question is, what are the difference? Because we, the first group we could see as, as, uh, as the, the one that is not using balanced oil, the other group is the one that is using balanced oil. So what are the differences? And we are, first we will look into the fatty acids group and we will see that uh, if you are going for, as a non-omega-3 user to start using balanced oil, the, the level of saturated fatty acids in, in your blood as a group will, will lower by 3.9%. Monounsaturated fatty acids is also lowered by 3.6%. Uh, the polyunsaturated omega-6 fatty acids is, is a very little influence, only 0.7% is a little increased, while the omega-3 fatty acids are increased by 6.7%. So you could in a way say that uh, when, you, when you use balanced oil, you, you substitute saturated and monounsaturated fat in, in, in the blood with polyunsaturated fat. And that has been the sort of the, the key for the Nordic Health Authority, Authority since 1975 to try to increase polyunsaturated fat at the expense of saturated fat in blood. And for their, 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 the reason for, for their request or, or, or target has always been to lower the blood cholesterol level in the population. So what I can say here is that using, using balanced oil as the omega-3 source is a very efficient way to lower saturated and also monounsaturated fat in, in blood. So this, this is, a, for me, it was one of the surprising results of, of, uh, of the, this uh, big big number of balanced tests that to see. If we move on from the, from the uh, groups to look at the, at the individual fatty acids, you will see that the main changes are that uh, palmitic acid, the saturated palmitic acid and the monounsaturated oleic acid are the two fatty acids that is substituted mainly by EPA and DHA. 
but also a, a little uh, arachidonic acid is also a little increased. And this is uh, what I will call a smart uh, trick, uh, smart step for the body, because the body is actually, if we can have a little, yeah, the body is actually taking essential fatty acids, EPA and DHA, are, are substituting, uh, they are substituting non-essential fatty acids like the palmitic and the oleic acid, fatty acids that the body can pr produce from uh, many other sources. So this is, uh, this is a smart, uh, smart step by the body, body to, to, to uh, instead of separating, uh, uh, substituting omega-6 polyunsaturated, it's, it's uh, substitute the saturated and monounsaturated fatty acids. Okay. So uh, I will say this is a smart, uh, smart way for the body to, to, to uh, use the, the fat efficiently. Okay. So if we're looking into the benefits of the olive oil uh, balance oil concept, we, we will start by looking into the polyunsaturated fatty acid metabolism. It is to understand the benefits of balance oil and any other oil, it is necessary to, to understand this concept. So if we can click on, on, a, on a, by just to select the, yeah. We'll see three of the fatty acids that we all that is all measured by the balance test are are producing less inflammatory eicosanoids or bioactive components. Th those components are produced when these fatty acids are released from the cell mem membrane into the cell. And uh, so, and both EPA, DHA, and gamma linoleic acid produce less inflammatory components. However, one of these uh, fatty acids. If you can click one more time. Uh, one of these fatty acids, the arachidonic acid, is producing more inflammatory uh, compounds. So, so three less inflammatory, one more inflammatory. And the question is, is, of course, how are they linked to benefits of balanced oil? So uh, we'll move on to a situation to look at the real situation. And of course, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, sit, uh, this uh, fatty acids or the polyunsaturated fatty acid metabolism is very important when you have an infection and an injury or is injury, any affection, bacteria, viruses or whatever, or if you're injured at an, a football field, uh, what will always happen is you will have an immediate and strong inflammatory response in local tissues. And uh, we have two situations. We have one situation where, where you are a non-balanced oil user, where you have high arachidonic acid value uh, compared to EPA. And uh, if we press the, key, press the key again, arachidonic acid will be released from the cell membrane and it will start produce the, the inflammatory eicosanoids, and you will feel it as either as fever, red rash, pain, poor general condition, and so on. And, and, uh, and uh, you will normally, you will, you will, you will feel that this is, this is not, uh, you don't have a, a, a very nice day. And you sometimes you will try to find some painkillers to help you, and that will also most of them will also work on these uh, arachidonic acid pathways to eicosanoids. However, without these responses, which is very important, these acute responses, we would probably be defenseless towards microbes and injuries that will never heal. So these are very important. Uh, we have, an, on the other hand, we have a, this this uh, this. Uh, this uh, situation where you have very high arachidonic acids where P EPA is also a risk situation when it comes to to uh, uh, the chronic inflammation, the low low level of chronic inflammation that may develop uh, uh, in the aftermath. So so it is uh, it is uh, it is for many reasons better to have a balanced uh, situation where arachidonic acid and EPA is balanced, also to avoid chronic inflammation to develop, and chronic uh, low silent uh, chronic inflammation is, as you all know, one of the uh, routes to, or maybe a major route to lifestyle diseases. So, if the other the other uh, situation, if we move on. 
The other is, if, uh, situation is when we have a, a balanced ratio between arachidonic acid and EPA in, in, the, in the cell membrane. Uh, the same thing will happen if you just click on. The same thing will happen, but you will have a, a balanced uh, release of both arachidonic acid and EPA from the cell membrane, and you will have a sort of a controlled or milder reaction uh, uh, or, or inflammatory response in, in local tissues when these are balanced. And, uh, but the importance of, of this uh, acute reaction is, is still very important. However, the risk of, of, of moving on into, into silent uh, chronic inflammation situation or into the development or uh, slowly development of lifestyle, is, uh, lifestyle diseases, this risk will be reduced by having this balance. So, so it, is, it is a question about the, the acute need for, for inflammatory processes and also the long-term uh, long-term uh, uh, responses for, from these reactions of, that can lead to uh, lifestyle diseases. Okay. So then I will give you just a few examples that I have just picked just because I, I, think I find them interesting. And the first, uh, first is about mood, mood parameters. And that is, was published by Professor Angela Risso and, and, uh, and uh, co-workers uh, already in, in, the, in the early 2007 or eight or something, uh, even earlier than that. Uh, and that was, they were looking at healthy subjects, healthy people that were had higher uh, level, high ratio between arachidonic acid and EPA. And, uh, and uh, then they provided a, a required uh, amount of omega-3s to lower this ratio down to less than five to one at that time. And, and what they experienced was that all these uh, mood parameters like anger, anxiety, fatigue, depression, uh, confusion, and also energy, all those uh, parameters were moving in the right direction. So, so people would have a, a, have a better situation if they were in, in a balance, balancing these uh, uh, fatty acids compared to if they were not having it. And they were also looking into, uh, for instance, uh, children that were diagnosed with, with, uh, with uh, ADHD. And the same thing uh, happened that when they were balanced, the, the inattention and hyperactivity was, was reduced. This is not a cure of anything, but it makes life better for this, this kind of, of group. C. So if we move on to the next situation, which I find also very interesting, it is about asthma, but it is also about the mothers to be that normally took less than 0.3 gram omega-3 daily on the red, red area down at the, at the graph. They were asked by, by in, the, in, the, in the study to increase their intake during pregnancy to 2.4 gram. And due to the weight of those mothers, that means that they will achieve, easily achieve more than 8% in, in the blood. This is a Danish study. But the, the interesting part is that they follow the children after birth up to five years. And, and they saw that in, in five years span, more than half of, uh, half of the children, 54% of the children, or we, there was a 54% uh, reduction in the number of children that obtained wheeze and asthma during the first five years of life as com compared to the control group. So it's very easy to, to obtain a very uh, some beneficial situation. Okay, we move on. The, the last example I will give is about blood pressure. Uh, this uh, this uh, test or, or this project was done at the University Hospital in Reykjavik in Iceland, where they had about 100 uh, persons which were uh, uh, 50 years and above and they, that had uh, high blood pressure or hypertension and they were randomized into three different groups. Uh, the two first group, the first group got the uh, balance oil as an oil. The second group got the balance oil as, as, a, as a powder or, or a milkshake that we had at that time. And then there was a control group. And the intervention was that the, these uh, were taking 1.5 gram omega-3 per day from balance oil for the period uh, required, uh, ad, 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 
advised by by the by the oil, and uh, they find out in the end that uh, the two groups using balanced oil they reduced their blood pressure on average by seven millimeter millimeter mercury, as compared to the control group. And this is uh, so. What does this mean in 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 uh, in uh, practice? If we move on, there is a. a uh, there is a study from based on more than 600,000 uh, participants or 120 different studies that was published in Lancet uh, by Dina in 2015, uh, stating, showing that uh, high blood pressure or stating that high blood pressure is globally the main cause of death that could have been prevented. And if you lower high blood pressure by 10 millimeter mercury, you will reduce mortality of cardiovascular disease by 13%. And if you lower, it, uh, lower the blood pressure more or less, you will reduce mortality of cardiovascular diseases proportionally. So this means that uh, already at uh, one and a half uh, gram uh, balance, omega-3 from balanced oil, we, we reduce it by seven millimeter mercury. But if you go on, then we can move on. If we ask the European Food Safety Authority, they will say that if you have an intake of three gram omega-3 daily, it will contribute to the maintenance of normal blood pressure and to lowering of, of triglycerides level in blood, which is an other, uh, which is an other uh, risk indicator for cardiovascular problem. So if we had the, the select, the, the, Choosing of having 1.5 gram during the study was made by the scientists, and uh, and but we see that if they had used a, a normal or the normal uh, balanced oil uh, intake, uh, which is uh, uh, higher, then we would have probably achieved a better, uh, even a better blood pressure reduction. Okay. And uh, this is about uh, just a summary of some of the low-grade chronic inflammation that uh, will be achieved, uh, or that, that is published uh, when you in, increase the omega-3 level or you balance the, the ratio of arachidonic acid in, in, in blood from, from uh, uh, favorable against asthma to reduction in blood pressure, as we see in reduction in mortality by 70% in secondary prevention of cardiovascular diseases, suppression of inflammation in patients with arthritis and normalization of blood, blood uh, pressure, depending on how much you in, uh, they intake. And uh, uh, so most of this is, 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 is an indicator of that, uh, that uh, by, by increasing the omega-3 level or by lowering the balance between uh, arachidonic acid, you will also, also have an uh, effect of, of the long-term, low, low, silently developing chronic inflammation, which is uh, part of the responsibility for most of these, issue, these cases. So then I will end my presentation by showing you some of the latest results. And, and uh, of course, we have asked the question, is balanced oil, uh, a crude oil, will it, will it differ from other omega-3, which I called refined fish oil? Most, most other omega-3s are refined fish oil. Will, 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 are we able to see that it is different in, in bioactivity? And uh, we, will, we will look into the enzymes of the polyunsaturated fatty acid metabolism. And if you push a key, we will see that uh, the first enzyme we will look into is elongases, which catalyzed the, the, the increase from, for instance, from, uh, uh, from C, C18 to C20, increase uh, or elongation of two carbon atoms in, in fatty acids. And uh, if we push uh, one more time, uh, this, uh, this each, uh, each uh, point in this graph is the average of from 1,000 up to 17,000 uh, uh, balanced tests, depending on, on uh, at uh, the omega-3 level. We can clearly see that there is a clear differences between those using omega other using other omega-3 compared to those using balanced oil, uh, and. Uh, we, I, it, I know it will be, it'll be part of a later presentation to, to, to describe what does this mean. Uh, 
So, uh, and it's out the scope of this presentation to to uh, to say what it means. But what you can see from the graph is, of course, it is uh, it is uh, stimulated. The uh, the uh, the other omega trees are stimulating this enzyme more than balanced oil. And but we can see if we can push the key, we can we can see that uh, this uh, that uh, balanced oil as a crude fish oil. And other omega-3, which are refined fish oil, they affect the enzyme elongase differently. So, and I will give you one more example of, of the thing which is, uh, which is uh, in what we're dealing with at the moment. If you push one, one more key, and then I will uh, have a look at the desaturases, uh, the five desaturases, which is catalyzing uh, the, uh, the change from uh, uh, gamma linoleic acid, the homo gamma linoleic acid to arachidonic acid. So, and this is a very special enzyme because it, it comes in, 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 uh, in a population, you will find many genetic variants of this, uh, this, uh, this enzyme. And the, these variants, the, the influence the level of arachidonic acid in blood. So if you look this from a, a population perspective, you will expect the arachidonic acid not to have one target value, but arachidonic acid to have more a profile in the population because of, of the, of the uh, genetic var uh, uh, variants of this enzyme. And if we can push one more, one more button, we will see that that uh, this is actually what happens if, if we go and look at at uh, the uh, balance test in, in the, we looked at about 100,000 of, of uh, balance oil users and about 50,000 using other omega trees you see that the arachidonic acid in the blood it will uh, it will uh, vary from less than 5% to more than 12% so it, uh, and the peak values you will find around eight nine percent. And but the interesting part for me in this this graph is saying that stating that if you look at the, to the left of the of the of the peak point, you will see that uh, uh, from the top peak to the left to the lower values of arachidonic acid, you will see that the balance all users are 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 dominating. Well, if you look at to the right, to the high arachidonic acid values, you will see that is those using other omega-3 that is, uh, that is uh, dominating. The, the yellow column is, is higher than the blue, uh, and so on. So there is, uh, again, clearly differences between uh, balanced oil, the crude fish oil, and other omega-3 refined fish oil in bioactivity. And, and uh, that will, I think, will be a very interesting presentation for for later later uh, in, later in this series. For you, so so you have something to look forward to. <laughs> okay, we we'll move on to the to the next slide. One more time, and this is just to to sum up. The balance oil concept is what I call a documented and proven health concept. It consists of a, a balanced test, a dry blood spot test to detect, uh, VITAS, a world-class laboratory to analyze, uh, and a balanced oil, which I will say is a safe, proven to be a safe dietary supplement, full of science to support your healthy aging. So uh, one more, one last uh, phrase is that balanced oil is actually a bio, bioactive crude fish oil, more like a fatty fish than refined omega trees. And this is, this is important if you go all the way, and this is my final statement, if you go all the way to the beginning of the omega-3 era, where, where you had the, the, the uh, Inuits or the Eskimos that were, were uh, seen to, that were, uh, didn't have that much cardiovascular problem as the rest of the European population. That was uh, the omega-3 was giving the, the benefit of, of this situation. And, and, uh, and, uh, but the real, the real reality is that, uh, that these uh, Inuits or, or, or Greenland Eskimos, they didn't eat uh, uh, refined fish oil. They didn't eat uh, omega-3 concentrate. They were eating mostly eating seal and fish, so that is why we try to make balanced oil as much like fish as possible. 
Thank you for your attention.